Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're seeing some eye candy of the Nova variety. There's an excellent massive scale study of the sun and agriculture, and there is more progress in magnetic sense biology with tentacles to other topics. But we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find it was one of the calmest days in the solar cycle's maximum phase. That's good for now, but energy builds on stars, and we've seen this before. Filaments, sunspots, are they just taking a big breath and ready to rock? With major sunspots returning soon, huge plasma filaments on the disk I'm definitely watching closely. Anything that launches this way will combine with the coronal hole impacts for amplified geomagnetic activity. Enjoy the calm, folks, and let's hope it lasts when those big sunspots return. The northern seas are rocking with storms at the moment, lots of strong lows. That happens when the polar vortex breaks down breakout, pumping Arctic air down into the Americas right now, which is why the temperatures are dropping a bit across a wide range of the continent. Top quake of the last several weeks struck Indonesia yesterday, 6.6, .6, but luckily offshore. Very good when most of the pressure release is away from harm. Today's eye candy is from Gemini. We are zooming in on the butterfly nebula here, and observers particularly like this one and the hourglass nebula for their extremely pure polar burst post-nova signature. Stars with this dramatic of a poloidal shape were almost certainly magnetically kicked for those advanced micronova observers who know what that means. First article today is a mega study on the entire peas and potatoes data across many years and tracked with the solar cycle and several other indicators. Most importantly here, they found that the activity level of the sun directly stimulates larger crop yields, a good rationale for why the opposite, grand solar minima, cause famines and starvation and conflict. Our top story today is this. They have literally come so far towards a Genesis level understanding of bird magnetic sense, it can be spooky. But sometimes the truth reveals more doors and hallways. On top of the confirmation that, yep, the entire animal kingdom is going to get very messed up during the magnetic pole shift, this is the fourth time in the last decade I have seen the magnetic sense being tied to something related to RNA. Since all creatures either consciously or subconsciously interact with Earth's magnetic field, I'm going to go ahead and guess that messing with our RNA is probably the last thing any of us want to do. But folks, I am excited because the winter tour kicks off in Omaha on Saturday. It's San Diego next month and Orlando, Dallas, and Las Vegas the three months after that. It's the disaster, the navigation required now, and how to prepare for survival. Of course, details of the crustal displacement, the pole shift, happens May 1 through 5 next year with Ethical Skeptic at Observer Ranch. But before that, in April, we have two different events with Dr. August Dunning, the Micronova. Echoes in Time, a critical component of this disaster that changes your prepping dramatically. And then the week after, dry fasting class in the Phoenix Protocol. Dr. Dunning, right there alongside us. We greatly appreciate your support. Links to all of these are below. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.